I don't know. Just I open windows at random, sometimes just to see what the hell's going to happen. Well, uh, oh, okay. Well, I understand that. I do that with buttons. Ah, be, and, be, I, and I found out this week um, that I get the button pushing thing from my mother because oh whoa. my god. Well, <laughs> in that case, I say welcome to the dark table where dorks are running amok. Amok, the I dorks tell you. And the dorkettes. And it is a happy Halloween dork table. <laughs> oh wow, you sound like how's Deke, that for? You sound like Deke hmm? Jackson for a minute there. <laughs> yeah, he did a he did a little skit for the radio today for you know Halloween. Ah, because sweet. yeah, he's in a faraway land that's locked down so tight you can't stick a finger in to the Scottish ass right now. Oh, my. Yeah, and it's going to be coming worse as time moves forward. Oh, every time you challenge worse, worse raises its r- ugly head and says, you called me ugly? You challenged uh, me? Watch this. Hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Grimnir. And uh, Miss Mary's along this week to do the thing at the place. Oh, yeah. And Miss Kate says, full moon, too. Oh, <laughs> For all you dorks and dorkettes and werewolves and witch, <laughs> werewolves. witches and witches. goblins and ghouls. <sighs> and uh, I'm <laughs> telling you, I miss the good old days. You know, when somebody got the virus, they just burned them at the stake. They didn't shut the whole fucking village down, for crying out loud. <laughs> Grimmy says, I'm low and you're high. Well, Gr- uh, Flash, you're always high. I'm very high. I'm trying to be high. Hold on. All, yeah. Hold on. I'm trying to. I'll take. Wait a minute. I'm. Wait. You're. I've got you as high as I can You've got get. Me as high. Yeah. Wow. I'm Uh-oh. high. Maybe. Are you wearing your headphone piece thing? Yes, I okay. am wearing my headphones. Well. Do your. Uh, you know your duties. Do my side as a co-hostage on the dork table on this here. Halloween and what is possibly the worst year in the history of mankind. <laughs> no, this is the year that everybody's going to look back with hindsight and go, 2020? Oi. <laughs> well, I'm not. Actually, no, I've got very little to complain about the past year, actually. I, You know, complaining-wise, although I, I will bitch a little bit from Farmer. now and then again, yeah. but... Right. I've learned an awful lot of life lessons this year. Yeah, um, but Grim that was says, bring uh, your level down, Flash. I already did. That's okay. turn your volume down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good Barman job. is right up top. How's that? Barman's the Barman. most wonderful spot in the whole wide That's world. Yeah. And That's he right. will be serving trick or drinkers tonight. You just have to show up wherever Barman's at. Good luck finding him. I also see Beetle is here. Beetle! Beetle, 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 Beetle. Beetle. He's probably not and, here, though. No, but, you know, just holler at He'll him anyway. Yeah. Cowboy Tech is here. Diddy of Dope, hey, Cowboy. C-T. He's always hey. here in pleasant voices, even when I'm going, <laughs> Okay, I, yeah. I'm going to have to do the weird sound effects. You realize that, because it is uh. Halloween-y. Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know, is also here, as well as the lovely Moose Coil, and they did the Freaker's Ball last night. Did you have a fun freak last night? I was so freaking tired by the time Freaker's Ball come up. It's like, no, I just can't do it. Well, they were it. they were trying to stay off the, the traditional topics, so they struggled a little bit. Ah. I, I heard it today. Well, my opinion, you know. Because well. some of these ideas that we got to chatter about on the radio, when you're doing the talking, that you feel it's burnt out, so you try to find something different. Well, certainly. Okay, well, sometimes the flow's better than others is all. I understand that. So, that was my I assessment. Too. There you go. Fuck it. I'm spoken. <laughs> Grimmy said he <laughs> thought it was <laughs> a great show, so there. 
Great. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's anti. Anti it, is here. It was Grim's mm. show. <laughs> of course it was. You know, you need to. I, my phone needs to go dun dun dun. It did that perfect yesterday, but. It did. I'll I'll get I'll I'll get back to that later. Okay. I also see Chalsa Denis is here as well as the lovely Soy. Hello. Honey. Dayam Van Meter is here as well as Flash Somebody. Who? Whoa. Oh, somebody, oh, oh, who? Oh. somebody who? Somebody who? Me. Somebody who? No. Who? Not who? 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 No. I no. Not who. <laughs> Sounds oh. like a, like you're looking for Floppy. an owl. What are you looking Floppy. for? A owl that eats buds? Ooh, ooh, <laughs> a bud eating yeah. owl. <laughs> I wonder what ooh. kind of yeah. What would it do? Would it get fucked up and then just sit there and stare and forget to make the noise? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, can you imagine if you had a pet owl and you like dropped a hit of acid and you were doing a staring contest and then all of a sudden it spun its head 360? Man, that that mess with you. Frumpy, hey Frumpy, how you doing? I wouldn't I be asking. See, I'm here, but just physically, the emotional and mental part, we're not sure about yet. This week, <laughs> I'll, I'll vouch I for you. <laughs> oh, okay. JJ's no, no, no. JJ's <laughs> is here. <laughs> that Scottish smeller. It's blustery here, JJ's. I hope it's not as blustery for you, because that kilt would be flapping like crazy in the breeze. Yeah, but Scottish wind up north, north, uh, west. Let me tell you. Ooh. I spent yeah. a little time in that shit. Let me, huh. That will, <laughs> that will get your attention. Huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can you say turtle? I see Meister Bra is here as well. Hey, Woody, how you doing? Woody. And we got Prince, as in print, as in not cursive. <laughs> I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here. Hey, Kate. How you doing? In Florida. Yeah, Florida. Ooh, Florida. I like Florida much better, but Florida makes it Florida. I also see Rob Wikes is here. Hey, Rob. How you doing? Did you pass the around bubbler. the bubbler? I see Barman's passing hmm. out. Joints of Atomic Northern Light. Wow. Holy crap. Yeah. I'm getting a contact high just from reading, reading it. it. Mm. Yeah. Trust no one. See, and I miss Darth Rome, so I could go, Darth Rome. <laughs> okay. Florida is rocking it. Sweet. Oh, how fun, Kate. That sounds like lots of fun. Okay. I also see Oofta. Oofta is here. Really? Oofta. He's oof and da. Oof da. Oh, there. you're being a Yeah, smart we got a Miss Vanna there? White is also here, the letter yeah. turning bot of the RLM channel, as yeah. well as yeah. Weather Dork, who is feeling just a wee bit blustery. Apparently, he had his beans yesterday, at least out here. Hey, Dan Tennessee, how you doing? Oh, do you feel better? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I see the Phantom is here. It's the, the Phantom. Phantom. Oh no, it's the Phantom. You know how do you, how do you do the laugh for the Phantom? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of like it would be like a uh, one of those guys that has the pencil protector in his pocket and the glasses. Oh, with a, the tape. A, a nerd one. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we we need Lewis Lewis to do this one. <laughs> I can't do an, an an artificial snort. I have, to, I, have to, I have to be laughing so hard I snort that, you know, the artificial one, I cause problems. In any case, 10 or 10. Wow. CC 66 is also here. I know. I see buttles myself. As well as the Cyborgian Noodle. And I'm sure that's probably the costume Cyborgian Noodle is going to wear this evening as well. May you be touched by the Cyborgian noodliness of it all. And Civ with the tail. That must mean it's a never-ending civilization, but it's the end of a never-ending civilization. When does that happen? Tuesday. Hmm. We have a guest, 93345. We do? Who is that? Who Asmo. knows? Asmo. It's Asmo. Ah, Hi, Asmo. Asmo. I also see Matt WJ2002. Papa Papa Pawn Sauce is also here, as well as 
Ker seventy. Ker no. seventy. Say it ain't so. Ker Quee. Ker Queeker. Wow. Ker Queeker. Okay, moving along. Sounds like Montaz. you're auditioning mm-hmm. for a porno movie. <laughs> okay. That's a queef. <sighs> okay. Very weird. Okay. That's what I we thought also you were got saying. the holiest Roger ever. <laughs> um, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> he has that nasty ass foot. Ooh. Ooh. Wait a minute. That sounds good. Vinny! Vinny's here. Nasty hey, foot. Vinny. Vinny. <laughs> and to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Z picks. That's all, folks. See you next week. <laughs> hey, pretty good. There you go. So, there you know what? Go. Did I tell you what I got to call the show today? <sighs> no, what did you get to call the show today? I called today's episode of the Dork Table. Are you feeling desperate yet? No, not until I go out and start raiding trick or treat or candy bags. Because damn it, I just want a butterfinger. Well, who the who the <laughs> hell went? Who the hell is, is going trick or treating this year? What? I don't you know. Lost but your both mind? of my dogs. Did you hear my dogs just freak out? Yeah, I thought I heard something. Yeah, I hear well, still I, here. Yeah. I was pounding my fists on my desk, and they both thought so. Oh, was knocking yeah. on the door. Yeah. <laughs> Poor dogs. You dog torturer. Man. Oh, they hauled ass for the door. Still <laughs> over there. <laughs> oh, good fresh meat. Yum yum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel. I felt a snack coming on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goofy dogs. So. They're so funny. So oh, well, you're as not, you were saying. You're not feeling desperate yet? Me? Desperate? No. Yeah. No, because I don't need a Butterfinger that bad. Although they are made by Nestle, and I have sworn mm-hmm. off of any products by Nestle. So. Yeah, well, you know, I had, I had an encounter at, in town today when I went to oh, yeah? the train station cigarette shop. Yes, indeed. You know what happened? What happened? <sighs> I didn't wear a mask. Uh oh. Yep. Dun dun dun. So the guy that runs the place tells me, well, all right, this time, you know, again, because I forgot the last time I went in. <laughs> forgot, and, yeah. Yeah, because I ain't wearing a fucking mask to do commerce with anybody. I'm, no, ain't going to happen. Well, pull your beard up and tell them this is well, my mask. I've I got a, it special. I've got a compromise. It's my bandana. My American flag made in China bandana. If they allow oh, that, then I'll do it, but only because it's my way, not their way. Well, that's what I do. Or, seeing as how it's starting to get cooler and stuff, I have scarves, you know, the the ones that you wrap around, and I just pull one of those up. Yeah, I can do that. And if they say something, I just tell them, it just says face covering. Yeah, I, I know time. that. Everybody knows that. It's just... You know, they don't want to get in trouble with their superiors that they answer to. I know. It's got nothing to do with me nor them. It's just the, the state. The state's got their nose up everybody's ass about this fucking hoax. And, and yet there are some people. Did you see that video I shared from Twitter hmm. earlier? That Which one? Was, oh, well, okay. Yeah. The gal that was at the park with her kids and all of these yeah. people started yeah. showing up. Not <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And listen you to need it. to make them leave. Yeah. Well, why should I have to leave? I'm an American. Okay, well, so are they, dumbass. But moving along. The, cop, the cop made good sense when he said, well, you're the one yelling. Yes. yes. Nobody else was upset. Nobody else was screaming. Just her. And she's yeah. the one, I'm this and I'm exceptional and look at my this and that and the other. And she's the one being an asshole. Yeah. Well, cop could have took her side. But he didn't. Could have. Which is weird because cops are notorious for putting the shit in you and then you know, stepping out of it, making it look like it was all your own fault. They're yeah, instigators. When you, stop and, when you stop and think about it, 99 times out of 100, the interactions are not negative. Really. Seriously. If you oh, yeah. The most of it. 
Right, but the ones that end in violence, Miss Mary, the ones that get the attention of the public are the ones that end in violence. So who cares how many fucking times it ends in violence? It's that it does, period. There is no fucking room in, in law enforcement for the fucked up behavior that you see these police do. They're power med fucking idiots and they need to, you know, be stopped, not encouraged. Well, I understand that. You know, you were talking about that and as while you were trying to do your typing earlier, I ran across something on Twitter. Hmm. And I I've got to read this cuz I Please the last do. line the last <laughs> line is the killer part. Is there a link so, to it or are we just read? Yes, I'll go ahead and share it in oh, the okay. in the chat. I'll, I'll put it in the notes for you then, sweetie. Um, think of it's that, an open uh-huh. letter from Anons. <clears throat> Dear incoming Congress, in a few days, President Donald J. Trump will win re-election resoundingly. The plan to save the world from the globalist cabal will continue unabated, and those of you who have knowingly and willfully supped with the devil's high minions will suffer whatever fate your conduct merits, which... You know, I really do believe that people get what they give. You know, maybe not right away, but the karma does come around. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, this letter is intended for those members of our next Congress who have not yet crossed the Rubicon into forbidden territory. Your transgressions may themselves be great or minor, or perhaps you are innocent of such lust for power. Whatever your circumstances, be forewarned. We elected President Trump for the specific reason of restoring our republic and replacing the governance of this country where it rightfully belongs, into the hands of people whose highest goal is to serve justly, wisely, and with due restraint of activities that provide us or that deprive us of our rights. So, we expect and demand that you perform your duties in such fashion. Now, this is all the gobbledygook, the the political stuff. Wait for it. It's the last line. (laughs) We are not going away. We will remain forever vigilant. We will investigate. We will uncover. We will act on what we find, good or bad. We can be your staunchest ally or most fearsome opponent. We prefer the former, but will gleefully become the latter if you provide us reason to do so. You should take this promise seriously. Anons have withstood the most brazen, horrid, continued attacks against us. Nothing has deterred us and nothing will. We have investigated, uncovered the truth, and acted upon it. And now we own the media. We own the narrative. We openly engage in psychological operations and have turned the truth into the most fearful and glorious weapon known to mankind. Here it comes. Cross us. You would be better off being perpetually sodomized by a badger on angel dust wielding a razor wire wrapped chainsaw. Fornicate around us and find out. Sincerely, Anons. Ouch. That last sentence was like, dude, that's some pretty freaking vivid imagination and sounds extremely painful. Yeah, well, yeah, but see... What I don't trust is the actual source of the writing. Well, it's an Anon. Okay, yeah, well, it could be an it. FBI Anon, for all I fucking know. I don't trust... It could be. Don't trust the it internet. Could. I don't trust people. I don't... Nothing. Period. I quit. In fact, I quit the human race about two, what, two weeks ago, Monday. Yep. Yeah, I know, and you know what? The what? human race didn't notice it because, don't, well, they're yeah. too busy racing they, other humans. They don't care. They, they just told I me to just, wear a mask next, next time. <laughs> so, I still just oh, absolutely love yeah. that. Cross us, and you'd be better off being perpetually sodomized by a badger on angel dust. That just... Yeah, I didn't even but, read the uh, wielding razor wire wrapped chainsaw. I, that part, I just saw the badger it was, on angel see, dust it and was, went, dude... It was fine. It was fine without. That's the line that killed it to me. Was that went too far? Ah, don't and, don't and that, ever. That was the line that made me go. Somebody had a good time writing this shit. Okay, don't <laughs> ever write a check that your mouth can't cash. Well, yes, yes. 
bouncy checks are not good. No, they just make you look like an idiot in the long run because oh, yes. you made a threat you can't fulfill. You're just talking shit. Well, ah, come on, razor blades and ah, nonsense. But the other part no. of it made good sense. It was intelligent. And then somebody yes. got carried away with their little adolescent ad lib. That's what's wrong with people now. They're, they're, they're so well, afraid of being a grown-up that they act ridiculous. There's a balance to it. See, and I don't think they were actually threatening to use a badger on angel dust. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> the, the whole... That, nah, yeah, I know. I know. Week. I just thought, wow, that one. Woo! It, but, it's like yeah. a disclaimer. It's a way to make a fucking threat and then make, ah, nan, nan, nan just played around. Ha, 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 ha. When they really meant what they said in the first half. Oh, yeah. Okay. They meant uh, what they said. But I don't have any faith in people anymore. People are freaking, they're, they're just, eh, <clears throat> fuck them. There you go. See, and I've, ah. I, I have gotten to the point where what? it's like people are going to do what people are going to do, and yeah. I can sit there and plead what? and beg and yeah. ask and tell mm. till I'm purple in the face. And they will just look at me and go, that's a lovely shade of purple. I'm going to go do this again. Hold my beer. No, I'm going to leave. But people are going to do what people do. That's just – that's. All and right, and I'm one of the are. and I'm one of the people that believes that the things that we do are controlled by outside influences. The more exceptional your behavior, the more likely what you did was caused by an outside source, not from your personal environment, but like the electronic world, society. Judgment. Okay, I could go along with the caused or maybe yeah. What? Initiated by, yeah, or you know, inspired by mm -hmm. outside, but not controlled. I no, no. Well, I don't feel controlled by outside. Of course, you don't. I, if I allow it to control me, then oh, it, it controls me. But if it, I don't allow it, then it, it's a judgment call for the other person to make on you. It's not a self awareness kind of thing, Mary. Please join the twenty fourth century here, will you? No, I'm not joining the 21st century. I'm having fun I being said in La La Land. Fourth. Uh, I'm 24th? Twenty-fourth. Oh, I'm ahead of I'm you not guys. There yet. Yeah. Well, ever see Star Trek? Uh, yeah. It's not like that in the future. <laughs> Just warning you now. That stuff's a bunch of bullshit. You know, my brother <laughs> was telling me because now they have they have Enterprise, which is supposed to be like a prequel. To Star Trek, yeah. But if if you watch the original Star Trek, and then you watch Enterprise, it's like holy shit, they digressed. Oh. They lost technology <laughs> because the new Again? Star Trek mm -hmm. is like so advanced yeah. Yeah. compared to the old. Lord Almighty. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> the way you <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm back. I know my sound effects. Need yeah, the, I wasn't expecting that for some reason. It struck me as funny. <laughs> all right. That's why I kidnap you for this show because trying to do this stuff all by myself doesn't work so good. Or I'll make myself laugh and other people don't get the joke. <laughs> that happens occasionally. Occasionally. Ask my wife. She'll go, yeah, what are you laughing about? <laughs> what? I don't get uh, it. Yeah. yeah. Once in a while. Not too often. Me and me and the wife usually, yeah, we, we usually on the same page at the same time. But then again, sometimes we're like worlds apart. <laughs> it's just weird. Oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. You know, and that, that whole lap. Yesterday, we had a snort fest like you would not believe. Cause good. I, I, good. I was good. still down at my mom's, and yes, our whole family. Our whole family needs a snort fest yeah. right now. Yeah. But yeah. two of my brothers and I and mom were sitting around and, and BSing yeah. after I packed up my van and get ready to go. And my brothers started telling stories on some of the shit they did when they were kids. <laughs> Oh, no. Tell it we on were, yourself. <laughs> oh, my God. And yeah. we were all just yeah. laughing. Just, yeah. 
just, I mean, it was hilarious. It really was. Well, yeah. And Mother yeah. said, I don't remember any of this happening. I don't remember <laughs> no. any of this happening. Oh, wow. No, because they were Danny said, telling their it's okay, side of Mom. This, yeah. Well, the funny part is, Brother Danny, and this is his first time down staying with Mom and helping yeah. her. <laughs> And he oh. goes, it's okay, Mom, if you don't remember it, because you wait a half an hour and you won't remember it again. Ooh. And right after he said that, I got a message on my phone, and my phone, whenever I get a message, goes, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the timing. <laughs> and we all died laughing. Oh, my God. Well, at least was, you have a sense of humor about all this. Cause yeah. Some things that are happening just ain't funny. Yes, yes. And we have all kind of decided because Wayne's thing is, you know, he'll come home from work and he'll be crabbing and bitching about what happened, you know, coworker or a piece of equipment or whatever. And I'll just look at him and go, are you done now? I know. If I ain't bitching, I ain't happy. So I've told my siblings that. So now kind of code whenever in the mornings because we always, whoever's with mom, we kind of send a text to the family and say, you know, how mom's mood is that morning. Yeah. And uh, Thursday morning, I sent a text out to everybody letting them know, oh, mom is extremely happy oh. today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> pretty much knew. Yeah, she grew, she woke up grumpy. Whew! Oh. Yeah, she was in rare form Thursday morning. But oh. I did eventually get her to laughing and, and the mood elevated, but. Whew, See, that's these, one of those things right. that I was. You these know, I wasn't the, prepared to deal with that with dementia. And you these know? these but, are the things that I call outside forces that you always argue with me about. That's not it. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. you're Ashley. <laughs> Whether you know it or yeah. not, you seem to be agreeing with what I'm talking about, you crazy one. Yeah, but I don't think it's necessarily controlling me, as in being an impotent. Oh, not you. Behavior. It's controlling your mother. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. Just like uh, how I mean things, right? Like, I'll give you a better example. What I eat uh, will directly affect my mood. The better I eat, the better my mood. The more crap I eat, the better I feel. And so that when I don't feel so good, then when I behave, I don't behave so nice. Ah, it's biology. It's got nothing to do with a choice. It's how the body functions. You know? Well, so and to be, once again, that proves the point of you are what you eat. Right. And to be uh, aware of this topic at the level of doing something about it is not as easy as I make it sound. You need a lot of help from other people. Or it would never occur to me alone to ever think of, oh, I can solve half of the things that hurt by eating certain food. What? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, Rose Hip got me off the arthritis. Shit. I got a friend to loan me a guitar I pick at every now and again. And there's no inflammation in the joints. I can't make a chord to save my ass. But my fingers don't hurt doing it. So, mm, voila. Right? Well, I got that, that vitamin C with Rose Hip that Grimmy did a link. A yeah. Of weeks ago. There you go. Uh. And I take that, and I also got this other one last week that I thought, oh, oh, because that will help other with one. my lower back. What is this well, other one? Well, it is one? from ZenWise. What's it called, it's advanced, Mary? ZenWise Advanced Strength Joint Support. And what? it's got glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM, boswella, uh, curcumin. Oh, it's a capsule of uh, like um, the accumulation yeah, of these things? Yeah, hyaluric acid. Wow. Yep. Okay. I wasn't following along. I'm not real good with medicine. I thought you knew that. Yeah, so I get I've, real lost I've been real taking quick. this for the okay. last week as well. And, and although they are horse pills, <laughs> mm-hmm. they, um, yeah. they do seem to be helping considerably. Okay, cool. The so, size of the bet. pill, or what do you mean, the horse pills? Uh, the size of the pill, yeah, they're freaking huge among us. Well, can't can't you use like some kind of certain drink to? I don't know. I if I had a situation like that, I'd just drink it with coffee or tea. Go 
guzzle. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, see, and I... Because yeah. if it's for your own health, I mean, your body's going to more or less work with you to do something that's for its benefit, too. So yes. certain things are going to tighten up because they're afraid. So you got to, you know, tell yourself, hey, this is for my own good. It makes things work better, I think. My experience, I would say that. But then other people, they think I'm insane. Go figure. <laughs> Yeah. I'm reading the chat. Uh -oh. Grimmy said roach clip equals joint support. <laughs> Whoa, very good. He's, yes. a, he's a funny guy. Anyway. Yep. <sighs> so, what? In any case, I just, you know, had to throw that little out. Oh, and that, out there. that link, let me see if I was, I was, see, I got stoned before the show today. So yeah, I, I, yeah, well, I've titled it Graham Z has some Twitter. And uh, then I copied that link, but I told you I, I shut down my Google crap thing with the because uh, it was connected to um, Firefox and it was getting controlling and irritating. Colorado Winds is that the one? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, put that in the in the notes under your, uh, what I called uh, what did I call it? Graham Z has some Twitter. <laughs> yeah. It's and then, all a Twitter. Okay, there we go. And you know, speaking of Colorado, yeah. I just got to throw this in there. Okay. Um, was speaking with my oldest daughter this morning. Um, they did get like two feet of snow where the the fires are out there in Colorado. So they are not necessarily out, but they are pretty much controlled now. So, da da. That's good news, though. Well, yeah, but yes, see, it is. okay, there, but yet. There is a certain amount of fire that's necessary for the forest to survive, that they've controlled it yeah. to a point of stupidity. You know, these things are natural. They've been going on for a long, long fucking time. Then you get these idiots out of college that think that they, they know something because they read a book once. And, and they get these laws changed to protect something that doesn't need to be protected. <laughs> so yeah, because they, they actually over, it does yeah. come back. Just like a child, they're overprotecting these kids into illnesses that they're going to get later. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what made me notice that real strong today? I don't think I mentioned this to you earlier. I seen a link on the Internet, and people from Amsterdam and Ireland were congregated at one table calling this whole thing a big fraud, this uh, uh -huh. COVID nonsense bullshit. And I will... Stand up and tell you to your face, whoever the fuck you are, get in front of me. And this this is the biggest load of bullshit I've ever seen in my life, and I'm Jewish. <laughs> so, you know, go figure. But you know what? I'm what? wondering, you know, just watching other people and, and seeing the progression of how people are starting to incorporate this into their mindset and how... They were such good little order followers, you know, and, and, oh, well, the government said, so it must be. And with the over-the-top reaction to the flu that they've done, and with Dr. Burks saying that, well, the, the flu isn't here anymore, you know, it's flu, is gone. <laughs> now it's all about COVID. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Suckers. All righty then. Wow, so, told you. You know, with all of this over the top shit, even those that were so asleep, they had hit that broke the snooze button. So even the snooze didn't, you know, the alarm just plain wouldn't go off anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. And even those people are starting to go, wait a minute. So, you know, for those of, of us that were going, oh, I call bullshit on this right off the bat. Hmm. We're sitting here going, what the fuck took you so long? But we got to stop and realize there's an awful lot of people that were very, 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 very like they had taken lots and lots and lots of, of sleep aid to stay asleep in all of this. Don't rock my boat. I'm happy with my go to work, come home, go to work, come home lifestyle. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But even those people are starting to go. Wait a minute. So it, in a weird, very painful way, I think this has been very cathartic. 
and it's waking an awful lot of people up and it's getting a lot of people to start questioning because once they question that and then they have people tell them, you think that's bad, check this shit. So then they start questioning all kinds of other stuff and then they start having the Acme light bulb moment. And so I, although it sucks yeah. for people that have called it bullshit and put up with the, you're a racist, you're a science denier, you're yeah. a, the, oh, you're yeah. a, yeah. you know. We Want to kill grandma, that. and I don't have any yeah. respect yeah. for you. And, well, Fuck you won't you. wear a mask. What do you think about seatbelts? Yeah. Uh, excuse me, a seatbelt seat would belt. save my yeah. life. Shut your ass. So, oh, well. Uh, you know, I still that say kind of stuff. I wouldn't so, you know, it is waking people up. It, yes, it's been a long, slow wake-up process. But some people really, really are very, very, very slow learners. I thought I was a slow learner, but oh, dear Lord. Not mm. near as slow as... And bless their hearts, they're learning in their 20s what it took me to my 50s to fully grasp. So, well, that's because the, the the level of deceit has accelerated beyond... Where we were when we were 20, it was still crawling along. Now yeah. it's flying on the internet at, you know, a speed that your eye can't even keep up with. So you're constantly being bombarded by all this negative shit on the internet with your consent yes. at your, at your own because you're doing it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, admitting it is 90% of what's wrong. It's like, oh, I'm not doing that. Probably are if you say you're not. <laughs> yeah. That's usually the first sign of a mistake right there. Oh, I ain't doing that. Well, okay. Sure. And the rest of us just, uh, we're doing it, but you're not. Hmm. I wonder how that works. Yeah. See, that's, people That's when you whip out the old Shakespeare. Okay. He thinks he doth protest too much. Yeah, because people misunderstand the way that I see the world over, you know. Because they don't really know me, you know, that, uh, like on the internet uh, thing, where uh, if you're somebody that comes into my house and associates with me, then you see a different side of me in person than you're going to ever get on the radio <laughs> or, or a chat room, little little crap here and there, trying to be a you know either throwing something on a fire or adding to a conversation, whatever the mood comes to. Yeah. But to yeah. take all this so to heart is uh that's the thing you gotta be. It's a distraction from your physical fucking reality, whatever that is. The electronic world is there to make you not think about it. Yeah. Well, I was commenting about somebody else today on the chat room that had a lot to say about a historical point. And it was like I don't know, 20 or 30 solid lines of text regarding this historical crap. And it's just struck me, it's easy to quote other people, but man, sometimes thinking of something all by yourself, your own personal fucking thought and typing it out, that's, that's not as easy to do as it seems. But the copycat repeating history bullshit, anybody can do that could teach a dog to do that. Well, yeah. that But that's current public education. Hey, sir. you to memorize. Cirque would point at the damn treat on the floor in front of Hannah and say German, and she wouldn't eat it. <coughs> and then, after a little bit, then she goes Danish, and then the dog would eat the treat. Oh, how funny. Oh, it was hysterical. I mean, the things that you can teach your dog to do. But some guy in England got uh, arrested for teaching his dog a Nazi trick and putting it on the Internet. Because the English, uh, over the last five or ten years, just got completely insane with uh, the punishing, the rude, and uh, nastier of us through you know wor our word and not our deed, but the way we talk. Yeah, well, I call it censorship, but some people call it good taste. There's different ways. You could disguise your your fears by misleading the person that you're complaining to, you know? 
I don't like yeah. the language they use actually means they don't, I want them silenced. Because there's no other way to silence them except to make a point of how rude they are telling you their tale. <laughs> and you know what? It works really good. Uh huh. Hey! Uh. What do you think? You think Joey, you think Joey told Joey's got a chance on Tuesday, or you think Trump's gonna hold the reins of power? Take you to the promised land. By God, country. Huh? 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 I gotta talk to I... you about this, because you're American, and I'm not. Well, <laughs> you know, from what I'm seeing on the interwebs, no. number one, yeah. looks like Joey is not doing well. Okay, yeah, that's from what the idea I'm seeing. Yeah. You know, yeah. as I'm out and about, you know, either here or where my mom lives, or towns in between, mm. or where I go shopping. Yeah. Joey's not doing so good, but not totally out of the race, you know. So I, I really, I really don't know because, good God, there here there be shenanigans, and I think there are going to be shenanigans. Wow. That's that's what I can pretty much guarantee. There are mm. going to be shenanigans. Mm. So. Well, it's not like it's the first time a, an election has created a public disturbance of this magnitude. It's just that now there's just more people on the Internet. You get more information quicker than the old days. Because in my day, when I was a child growing up, and we had a wackadoodle president called Nixon. Well, before he, when he was running, uh, the Democrats bombed some place in Detroit killed a cop and all kinds of crap. So things haven't uh, escalated. They've just gotten, uh, how do you, there's just more of it. You can yeah. control, yeah, you control your chaos through the illusion that it's chaos. Well, I think some, I don't know that it's necessarily even more of it or, or whatever. I think people have more personal <sighs> access well, okay, through, you know, through all this lockdown mess and whatnot over the last bit of time, there have still been lots of places where people have been protesting against stuff, okay? Many uh -huh. countries, not just the U USA is not the only one, but there's a handful of countries that got shut down tighter than a knit butthole, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're not one of them. I mean, there's some places in the states that are tighter than others, but as a whole, where, like, Australia just got the whole fucking, they just knocked the whole shit out of the whole country all at one time. Yeah. They're going to be in debt. I mean, see, this is why I don't understand. What I'm looking at, and I'm being told back, though this is a, a virus threat, and I'm looking at it and going, no, this is a financial collapse and a reset of the currency. They're going to pull the currency globally, and they're going to replace it with a card. And if you don't have the card, fuck you, buddy. And on top of all that, shutting down all these businesses, I mean, why, why would they do this? To cull the herd. Oh, yeah. But, okay, but they... There's too many of us to control easily. Yeah. So they report it as one thing, and they do something else. It's just the same old thing. It's not, nothing different. Just now you got the Internet, so people can tell you the truth in a way that you don't believe the truth. Because it's very unattractive to believe that this whole COVID crap is a bunch of bullshit dreamed up by a, a room full of guys that are greedier than fuck. How can we skin these all these motherfuckers at once and blame some invisible thing, and get away with it. And there, there we go. We've got COVID. Well, and it took lots and lots of years of convincing people that, that your immune system needs this assistance. Oh, yeah, fuck. And all those years of injections and Bill Gates and all this bullshit. Yep. I was so fucking lucky. I scraped by through all this nonsense with a flu shot one time in 2011. And outside of that, fuck no. They drew blood from me, but they never, never let them shoot me with anything. Except, uh, well, 
the other time uh, I had my hernias at that time they did the uh this synthetic opioid give mm-hmm. you a shot oh my god I was in agony and then the minute they pulled that needle out of me I went whoa I can dance <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was just like fuck pain stuff well hernias are painful at a certain yes. point right yeah and I was at that point so there you go <laughs> Yeah, well, I I don't I don't know what to compare that with except that it's painful. So if you haven't done it, been through it or whatever, then you probably don't know. But you seem to be familiar. So childbirth might might be a little bit more extreme because it lasts longer. Well, but, uh, well, see, it depends on the treatment. Yeah, it de- but it, again, it depends on the treatment. If I hadn't been treated, I would have been dead. Yeah, well, and my brother, my oldest brother, had hernia surgery, and they did that mesh thing. Mm-hmm, that's what I got. got, yeah. yeah. He got a really bad infection, and they wound up having to go in and take the mesh out. Whoa! Dead. No, that's Damn bad. Damn killed him. Yeah, because the hospitals are just, the stories that you read about and the truth about a hospital are night and day. It's just unbelievable. And if you want to find out the truth about it, Make a friend in the medical profession that works in it, and they'll tell you. So you get told one story, and then you hear it from a nurse, and, hey, wait a minute, that's not what I saw. <laughs> of course not. You get told a bunch of shit for TV shows. And how People are so misinformed about reality, it's, it's just not believable. Makes you sound crazy talking about it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Brandon's oh. sitting there going, wrecked him, damn near killed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a butt pucker. <laughs> yeah, well. It's funny as long as it's just talk, but you know. I think that th- there's a certain amount of people in the planet that truly enjoy the suffering and the misery of other people. It makes yeah. them feel good. Yeah. I've, I've seen it in chat a couple of times. Where certain personalities get their rocks off because other people are suffering as a result of some government decision. I'm thinking, wow, you cold-hearted motherfucker. It would be cool if it was you. (laughs) You know, and my daughter and I were talking about that because, you know, she was saying that this shutdown was actually good for them because... They got to spend a lot more family time, which, yes, I've heard a lot of people say that. They got to, they did an awful lot of, you know, going up into the mountains and stuff. Since she lives out in Colorado, it's easy for them to go up in the mountains. And they limited their kids' um, online time. They only got to have an hour a day. And, you know, she was trying to explain to the kids, you know, how... Just because someone says something or shows something on the Internet doesn't mean that's what their real life is like, you know, and and I said, yeah. And also, you know, they think the the interaction online is so easy. You can say mean and hurtful shit and just hit enter and then go, ha, ha, ha. I was just joking. Whereas you try saying that to him face to face and your odds are you're going to get a bloody nose. And she said, yeah, I had to point that out to one of the kids, too, to let him know that, yes, you have a very sharp wit, but would you say that face-to-face to to someone? No, you would not, so don't do it on the Internet. And that's that's one thing that I think this is – social media has has made it to where people can connect more with all parts of the world, but it's also made it to where some people – not everyone, but some people, and they are the ones that ruin it for the rest of the class, will get in there and say the most obnoxious, hurtful shit, knowing that they can just, oh, I can delete it in five minutes, and it'll be like it never happened. Fuck you. No, it's not like it never happened. What was that mean? Um, you know, treat it like a, um, a, a fine piece of china. You know, you you say mean, hateful, hurtful things to someone. It's like you take a dish of china and you drop it on the floor, and it shatters into a million pieces. Okay, you go get your super glue. You glue it all back together again. Oh, see, there, it's good as new. No, it's not. It's cracked. It's stressed. It's been broken and put back together again. But it doesn't mean 
You know, so people need people don't understand, and that's that's one of the things with kids. I really think this generation has really, you know, I don't know that I could have grown up with this kind of information stuff inundating me all the time like the kids are now. Because man, they are they're just flat ass getting inundated, and my my daughter was telling me. Every year out there in Colorado, they have at least one child under the age of 18 that commits suicide every year. And it's because of, you know, in their little notes that they leave because of something they were told on social media or, you know, so-and-so didn't like what they said on social media. So they stopped talking to them in the, in real life. And good God, I am so glad I did not grow up with this in my face 24-7 like they've got it now. I'm glad my daughter limits their exposure to the Internet, even though, you know, they still got to deal with kids in school and blah, 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 blah. But, man, oh, man, people just don't realize, you know, you you be hurtful, you be hateful, you just because you think you're witty. I can say whatever I damn well please. It's just a chat room. It's just on Facebook. It's just on Twitter. No, it's not. Ooh. No, it's not. Wow. And okay. I, my thing is don't say anything on the Internet that you're not willing to say to someone to their face. So. Good luck with that story. It ain't going to work. Well, for most people it doesn't. But I Civilization failed. Society's over. We're We're in the, like... It's being drugged down the road. It's dead. It doesn't fucking work. But okay, the, people the won't admit that part. Does not work. And yes, it is the end of the current model. But so I they're think so they have afraid. A at an awesome beginning. They're uh, all right. Well, whatever. I don't see that. I see a bunch of people that are so afraid that they don't want to try something different. They want to fix what's broken. And there's no way to fix what's broken. It's the game that's designed to play this way. And then oh, when yeah. you when you try to explain that to you know a say status minded kind of person, they want to shoot you in the face with a gun because you're some kind of anarchist scum, and they're all confused about the whole fucking point of what freedom truly is. And they think that. Freedom is being a, a slave to a bank for 30 years and having your own little, you know, four-bedroom house in the suburbs and a car or two. And there's your freedom. And it's some guns in case the neighbors get stupid. Or they think freedom is the ability to say whatever they damn well please, but when you say oh. whatever you damn well please <laughs> right back to them, then it's like, you can't say that. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. If yeah. you are free to say what you think, then mm -hmm. I am, you know, they don't extend that freedom out and acknowledge that if they have a freedom, mm. everybody else does too. Oh. That's the way freedom and rights, I have a right. Mm. Okay, if yeah. you've got a right, then everybody's got it. Period. Wait a End minute. Where does the everybody part come in? <laughs> rights are singular, damn it. They're not, they're not group things. Yeah, rights things. are singular. They're yeah. individual things. If they're individual, that means you can't join a group to make it bigger. It's just an idea that you're you're being bullshitted with it in the long run because it's nonsense. But it sounds good. It makes a good story. And, and if you really believe the politicians and the doctors and shit, it, this shit might work on you. You go, wow, hey, society is wonderful. And I look at it and think, wow, this shit died about 100 years ago and nobody wants to bury it. And it smells terrible. Terrible. See, and, and you see it like mm -hmm. that, and there's a lot of other people that just plain don't see it that way yet. Oh, I know that. I'm way out keeping it alive. And yes. That's the crazy thing. Do you know Grimmy has a left as well? As well as what? As a right. A right what? He has a right and he has a left. No, he I'm doesn't. A left -hander, Maybe so he... I have a left and a right. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm going to take over the world now that I don't have to be part of the human race anymore. Hmm. Perhaps I could attack the world as an alien being. <laughs> you know, I just got a mental image right. of of a world full of just right hand or right side. Hmm. That would be 
You know, because even if you had two arms and two legs, they would both be right. Hmm. I don't and know. It, it, so it would always be bass backwards for one of them. Oh. Well, I think you'd adjust. Humans are just incredible beings. You know, the, I think that uh, until you lose something to find out, you don't really appreciate shit so much. And then when you lose something, you go, wow, I sure wish I had that hand back. And when I yeah. had that hand, I could draw and paint and throw a ball. And, but, you know, these things don't matter to you until you lose it. And you go, hey, wait a minute. I don't have a hand anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that hold that thought. and It doesn't have to be like a paranoia, just an awareness to keep you away from putting your fingers near burning saws and shit that could, you know, fuck you up. But yeah. the paranoia has been brought to the top as a surface. And now you got some stupid ass fuck screaming at people about wearing a mask. Because oh, yeah. because they're in they're outside. This is how fucking ignorant that people have become in the last forty, fifty, a hundred years. They really believe this shit. They've seen so many fucking movies where people drop dead from the gas that that's what they think. They really believe but it's going to happen to them. It's an ignorance based in fear. And it works. Yes, it does. Surrounded by these morons, for fuck's sake. Yep. What do, and they're and, so and, concerned about self-preservation that they want everybody else to do bend over backwards so that they aren't so scared. Right. Wait a minute. What happened? To the, uh, well, I wasn't promised any freedom when I signed on to this thing. So I've, and it's very limited. You know, I'm not being pushed and told to do anything. I'm being told unless you do this, then you can't do that. So blackmail force still rubs me raw. <laughs> I'm still, well, I guess, a stubborn American. It would be a mindset that I have that my peers here don't have because they're Danish. They see the state behave differently than I see it. No matter what it does to them, it's their state. Yeah. Grimmy, okay. it's both, actually. What? Grimmy said, is it ignorance based in fear or fear based in ignorance? And it is both. Depends on the person and the fear. I've got mine. I'm sure I've got something, but... I whenever it comes to the surface, I man, I stomp down. You know, what good does it do you to be afraid of the dark? You know, I don't understand the concept of it. So I turn oh, a light and switch on before I do shit. Nothing to fear. Speaking as someone <laughs> who was afraid of the dark for a long time when I was a kid, yeah. oh, uh, let me tell you. What? Yeah, that can that can really mess with you. But you know, I and. My dad always told me that that I saw things, which, you know, and his his mother, my grandma, my grandma actually did, you know, like, see things that nobody else could see. And it wasn't because she was wacky or anything like that. She saw things. And, and I know when I was little, I could see things. And so my dad actually broke down and put a nightlight in my room because I saw things in the dark mm -hmm. and so dad decided if I did not have the dark and I eventually got over it I eventually got to the point where it's like I'm meaner than you are because I'm physical and you're not I, but once that finally registered in my head mm -hmm. I was okay but boy before that I was terrified of the dark well that's because a human being does not hit the point in life they can tell reality from fantasy until they're about nine uh, it's an average, but give or take, nine years old is just about when you start noticing the difference between what you think and what is real. It's that tipping point. So you probably hit that. Well, that and and actually I think my tipping point pretty much was, okay, old story, um, when my grandma and grandpa were killed in a car wreck. Grandpa died instantly. Grandma died two weeks later. But we went down for Grandpa's funeral, and that was the first that I knew that he was not my real Grandpa. Because we were at Grandma's house, and we were looking at old pictures, 
and I asked who somebody was in a coffin. Because, <laughs> yeah, they took pictures of people in coffins. Talk about freaky. And uh, my cousin told me, oh, well, that's Grandpa. And I'm like, no, that, no. So that was my first realization that who I thought was my grandpa was not my blood grandpa. He was my grandpa, but not by blood. In any case, the one that was in the coffin was my real blood grandpa. Okay, we get called down for lunch, and we start putting all these pictures away back in the closet. My mom's standing at the bottom of the stairs. My cousin is standing just below me, and I have another cousin standing right behind me. And I looked up as we're coming down, and a hand reached out of that closet towards me, and I passed out and tumbled down the stairs, took the cousin in front of me out with me. But the cousin behind me saw that hand reach out as well. So I'm thinking, because she said it before I come back to consciousness, and when I come back to consciousness, it's like, I saw a hand reach out of the closet. So that was, you know, and then talking with cousins, I realized that, oh, okay, that's not something you necessarily need to be afraid of. It can't really touch you. It can't really hurt you. But, you know, when I got, it was talking with someone that had also experienced such things that got me to where I was no longer afraid of the dark because then it was like, oh, okay, okay, that I can deal with. It's a ghost. Okay, ghosts are supposed to be spooky, but I I know how to deal with it yet. But I don't you, know. Your mind it's supposed just, to be the Indian blood in me, but I uh, uh, Your mind whatever. connects with the shit to get you through it. It helps you survive anything that happens. Okay? Yeah. That's all. So you went through a little fear patch. Uh, I was spared all that by my dad. So he was... You know, he was a maniac in one respect, and in another way, he he made more sense than everybody else did. But his uh, his ways were very violent and uh, determined. You know, he'd make up his mind, and that was the fucking end of that. Oh yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I think that's a dad thing. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. My dad was too. okay. Well, my kid would never say that about. Me. They might be mad at me over the, you know, the getting married to, to Cirque thing, but I'm not, uh, not very controlling with the, uh, the parental thing. I was always You're like not a, a my way or the highway kind ah, of guy. Fuck no, because you know I remember being a kid and how I despised adults and their fucking bullshit, their torture. Ugh, it was disgusting. Hated it. So when I became an adult in a position where I was influencing younger people, I was very aware to not put them through the shit I went through. I thought it was unnecessary to be uh, bullied into thinking certain shit. Either you believe something or you don't. If you don't, that's the end of it. Not You'll fucking see it my way or I'll whip you until your eyes bleed doesn't really work on us. It just makes the person meaner. <laughs> uh, it can. Or, no, I'm telling you from experience. There's no, My oh, brother yeah. is just as mean as I am. He, he just disguises it socially. So people don't see the violence until it's way too late. And they go, holy fuck. <laughs> it's not physical violence. It's mental violence. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that was the nice thing about talking with my daughter. Because, man, oh, man, that girl learned a lot of life lessons. And some of them were lessons that I didn't necessarily intend to teach her that. But I'm glad she got a good lesson out of it. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. I know I was not the perfect parent. I know I was. Oh, that. <clears throat> Fuck. What? But, Any you know, idiot she... that says they were a perfect anything is crazy as fuck. You do shit, you live a life, and shit happens in the fucking middle. Get over yourself. <laughs> well, see, now I know perfect I'm a perfect parent, parent because I'm a perfect <laughs> when I be, and I'm a perfect angel when I want to be. I'm perfect. Jeez. Well, I, I still don't see how other people can hold you responsible for what they do based on your 
uh, position in a family uh, tree. It's yeah, and the bunch patriarchy of, thing. Yeah, please. It's a bunch of legal beagle shit to me. So, hmm. Yeah. Well, it, it's one of those things that when we all grow up with that, hmm. and, you know, some of the videos that I've listened to lately about, you know, how we all are programmed from birth. And we are, whether it's intentional or not. It is it is a form of programming. Some of it is programming us to be more socially acceptable. Some of it is programming us to be good little Catholics, you know, or good little Protestants or good little Muslims or good little... But it's all programming. And it's all insane in the first place. Good Lord. What a bunch of crap religion is. If you read through it, I mean... It's all the same crap about different things that are all the same. So, no, please. There's plenty of fiction to go through without taking that stuff too serious. It's like this uh, virus crap that we're sitting through now, right today, is based on shit people saw in TV shows and movies. They really believe the uh, stories they get told because they don't have a clue to fucking reality. It's, it's almost embarrassing. Well, I got to walk past people that are wearing masks in public out of fear because they're on the way to the train or they're on, you know, between the train and the bus or whatever the sh fucking shit is. And when I see their eyes, it just I can't I can't enjoy that. It's painful. See, you're seeing that and I'm finally, you know, people, of course, pe like I said, people are waking up to the bullshit. I hope and so. The, the authoritarians uh, are have pushed it too far, especially where my mom lives, because people are really not happy. To, there are some that are still the mask Nazis, but for the most part, I say ninety percent of the population is like, "What the actual fuck?" Because yeah. you know, cops are going into like eating establishments and stuff, and you're supposed to put your mask on when you enter and wear your mask until you get to your table, and then you can take your mask off. Now they're saying you can't take your mask off until your food is placed in front of you. And if you get up to go to the bathroom, you have to put your mask on so you can walk through to go use the bathroom and keep wearing your mask mm. till you come back to the table and sit down. And then you can take your mask off to eat and then yeah. put it back on again. Yeah. And cops are, you know, there are some cops, and these are the assholios that you were talking about earlier that come in and they write tickets. For you not wearing your mask when your food's not in front of you. So people are getting pissed. People are getting fed up with it. And last week when I was down there, it what it had been that every time I went out to go either take mom somewhere or to go and pick something up for her, you'd see people walking around outside wearing masks. Mm -hmm. Last week I didn't see a single mask until you got inside stores. And most of them had them just below or just along the upper lip. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's like, okay, I got a freaking face covering on. Are you happy? Let me buy my damn groceries and go home. So mm. it's taking time, but but people are people are saying, uh uh, uh uh, ain't having this shit anymore. No. You, this is just a revenue generating stream and a fear porn stream. That's all this is. Hmm. So it's nice to it's nice to see that because man, where my mom lives really is a pretty strong Democrat community. Okay. And so to to see that community do that kind of a turnaround is like, there you go, there you go. Yeah, and I'm the opposite of, of it. it. Is I I know better from the people that I associate with down in, in the bar they got the same fucking bullshit but the people in the bar are not they're not holding us responsible you bring one with you and put it in your fucking pocket if in case we get harassed but yeah. how can you sit there and drink and smoke with a fucking mask on? it's stupid so we all know that it's stupid okay but yeah. see we all know we all know that therefore then this particular group of people the ones that are wasting their time drinking are the only ones that understand that we're being fucked. <laughs> all the normal people that don't smoke and drink and they play all the rules and they do all of what they're told are the ones that are believing this stuff. 
and they don't have a clue that they're being screwed. So when I walk down the road now and get to the train station and I see these people in mass, I be I make eye contact with people. I'm not afraid to look at people's face. But with these masks, you see the fucking eyes and that, ugh, ick. I know. I don't want to look it, at that. It is a scary sight. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So I don't know. How the fuck do you react to that? I, I can't do I must be freaked out because it's like, ugh. And I, I wouldn't, and it I wouldn't see surprise wearing me. wearing a mask, I just smile and keep walking because it's like. I didn't I, think of I, smiling. I just thought, get, wow, run. What the fuck did I just pass? What the hell was that? Eyes with no no face. It was just weird. No, I don't want to do that. I, I see the fear in the eyes. Some of them. Some of them you see freaking. I don't know. You know. It's like without them rolling their eyes like yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. They're they're still walking yeah. along. They're still wearing it. But Doing it. Yeah. You get you get the vibe that they're fuck, compliant. I, mean, well, I, 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 I don't hey. want to get a goddamn ticket. Exactly. Well, okay. So you've got the compliance to fight. It, this whole thing's a big fucking divide and conquer in the first place. But I ain't going along with it. To I got my reasons. And that's all there is to that. Well, and even like Cirque's, Cirque's even gotten a little hot with me. Well, yeah, but, you know, now you can't even go to the grocery store if you don't do it. So then I won't go to the grocery store. I'll walk around. What are they going to do? Tell me I can't walk around? Then then it's over. Yeah. Because that's not reality. I mean, come on. You, well. you can... Well... I don't need to do the, uh, the the stores. We can have things brought to us. So, you know, that was just because I felt like doing it. But if the state is going to use that as a weapon against me and interfere with my freedom of choice, I'm going to take it personal. Yeah, the fear of other is strong right now. Okay, but... And I'm, yet... There an off, there's an awful lot of people that aren't necessarily fearful. They're just to the point of saying, fuck it. You know, they're still going along. They're still rolling their eyes, but they're to that point. Oh, and I think okay. if, yeah. if, if enough of them get yeah. that little... I think that's all part of... the ticket because yeah, you're not wearing your mask all the time. Yeah, that's all, part of, the, of them. It's all part of the plan. The divide and conquer deal works because of that whole mentality. Get them to fight amongst themselves over shit that has no reality at all to it. You can even write on the package, this will not help you at all, but tell them that they got to wear one and they'll do it. What? Yep. <laughs> yep. Tell them to stick a finger up the ass of the person standing to their left. And believe me, there's going to be some fucking weirdo trying to stick their thumb up your ass if you're to their left. So, if you care about your neighbor, cornholio them. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any fucking difference. Control is control is control. Yes. If you cannot do things unless you do this or that, where's the freedom part come in? Uh, this should be a matter of the, the person that is threatened should be responsible to wear the mask. And if you don't feel threatened, don't wear one. They should openly say that. That way we know who's afraid. Not force people to keep their job and stay employed and travel and these other things. Force them to do this too so that we can muddy the water and make it look bigger than it truly is. So, see, and, see and I think where they really screwed up, if I ran the zoo, which I obviously do not, but if I ran the zoo when all this shit first hit, I'd say, okay, here's an announcement. Federal mandate. If you feel like shit, stay home. Otherwise, get your ass out there and live your life. If you, you know, cause, and I think that's where all this asymptomatic carriers are spreading. Bullshit. Bullshit. But, you know, that's why they had to bring in the asymptomatic shit. Because ah. there were enough people that were saying, nah. <laughs> this is a bunch of crap. This has yeah. gone on too long. Then they pulled out the asymptomatic. And the fearful ones mm -hmm. 
are the ones that latched onto that and went, you could be asymptomatic. You must wear a mask if you care about me. Okay, you know what? Obviously, I don't care about you because I'm not wearing no damn mask. I'm not asymptomatic, period. Look at the and look at the health. Then it's the... go get tested. No, I don't want to have the back of my skull sc- scratched through my nose. But look at the All health right. of the person yelling at you about threatening them. Yeah, well, their mental health is what I see, and it's like, dude, seriously, you need some help. Ouch. Okay. Well, and I do, and yeah, when I have been confronted twice about this. Hmm. And both times I looked at him and said, wow, wow, you are really afraid, aren't you? That It really worked. You are afraid of nature and you're afraid of other people. Wow. And then I just turn and walk away. Or it's like a, the train station. It's a matter of keeping their insurance and other shit going. Their customers have to do these things. Oh, and it. There's all these other side, you know, come on, sideways to get the control of the people without yeah. telling the people we're going to find a way to get you somewhere. Because, you know, <laughs> it's a game. It's a chess game. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And they're seeing how many of the pawns are falling for it. Well, so. I'm just sure glad that when uh, I was telling Cirque what I told her when, before she she wanted to move up where we're at. I'm sure glad I said something. <laughs> and most of her family is too, because they get to come up here and hang out when they get sick of the, the city, take a break, and come up and go, hey, we're going to come up for a bit. So. <laughs> it's the city life, but it's gone to shit. Even the locals, you know, that go to Copenhagen. <laughs> They're not too impressed right now. Freetown's a fucking mess. It used to be fun. When I was first here, I got went to Freetown for eight months. <laughs> Once, twice a week sometimes. Just to just to get a giggle and check out what was going on. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. But now I I wouldn't want to the way I've been told things have changed. I wouldn't want to go visit now. So all okay. this all this crap that I did before the COVID, with, like with Cirque and whatnot, and it all worked out for the both of us. <laughs> Our personal shit came out great. The only thing I'm inconvenienced by is that I've got to see other people wearing face masks to do commerce and it, it upsets me. And I can't express that to them. It's not for one. I'm I'm not Danish, and for two, it's not my place to save them from anything. Yeah. But the way that I really feel about wearing a mask, they should treat them like children. You know, the kids don't have to wear the fucking things. Why not? Because they do them damage, and they fucking know that. They didn't know that they'd be masking the fucking kids too, but the parents won't have it. But they'll do it to themselves to keep peace in the society and keep a job. <laughs> and they are teaching their children a lesson, and they're not necessarily sure what that lesson is yet. I don't know. I don't know what to make of the world. I'm just glad that uh, I'm not young today. Ooh, fuck this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a good time in history to be uh, anarchist scum in the 60-year bracket. So I'm <laughs> fucking lucky to be uh, where I'm at in life. And then on top of it all, my partner, Circle, she doesn't think all that much differently than I do. We just got different ways of expressing it verbally. But in the long run, we're the same, you know, for the most part. For the most part. Yeah. Yeah. But Cirque's got more tolerance for uh, the present day shit than I do, because she grew up with the internet and the internet and the phone and all that crap. The shit that I don't want no fucking part of, <laughs> baby knows how to handle that shit. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. 
See, at least one of you knows how to, so you're a perfect set. Or a pair, or bookends, your bookends. Well, partnerships, they, they work on one person's strength is not the other one's weakness. And Yep. Yeah, so what the things that I'm super strong at, Cirque's not. And the things that she's really super strong at, I've got one, no no interest in it, let alone the uh, ability to pursue it. Nah, it's it would be insane. So, no. So, I do yeah. what I do instead. Yeah, fuck. But it's 2020 and we have the internet webs. So, I got yeah. involved with Larry uh, Woods and Rob Works on Thursday, mm-hmm. you know, to do a little... Um, I don't know, exploring into what could possibly be. And along the way, I tripped over this information through Larry that the reason that these things are so hard to get off the ground in America is because the laws are written to confine your uh, production to certain levels. So you can never improve it legally because they know what you need to do to do to improve it so they make that illegal. You can't do that. Oh, yeah. And then they justify the control issue by calling it a safety measure to keep the public quiet because they're going to go, wait a minute. We could get what? <laughs> no, no, no. It's to keep them safe. Oh, okay. Never mind. Back to you know, back to work they go. As long as the government tells the people what they've been programmed to understand, then everything continues. Okay. But there's one little problem here, and that is they run out of, they can't print any more money. (laughs) Wow. The money is going to be worth negative something if they print any more of it. Then what are you going to do? Well, I don't know. Maybe people will just finally decide that, you know, this doesn't even work for toilet paper. What the hell are we doing this for? Maybe. Maybe. Never know. Well, it doesn't, doesn't seem like there's going to be any great change because they're having a, an election on Tuesday. What's going to be different Wednesday? <laughs> Nothing. See, and I... For you, it may be nothing, but, you know, for an awful lot of people, Mm -hmm. because they're so invested, it could be something. It could be something really, really good, or it could be something really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And that's where it really is very much a a personal perspective. Mm -hmm. So, see, this is the part I can never grip onto, is that I'm sitting in this building wherever I'm sitting. And this other thing is going on a couple thousand miles away, and everybody's all participating in it. And I'm supposed to get all juicy and excited over some fucking relic I don't know that I wouldn't want to have a beer with in a public bar. And I've got to put all my attention on this fucking prick. Because of what? Because of the decisions he's going to make? No, give me a fucking break. Bankers run politics. Politicians are front men for bad banker bands. <laughs> and people just don't want to believe that. They, they like the illusion of government. And, oh, queens and kings. No, we're being controlled by businesses with front men called politicians. It's just overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? They're working. They're yeah. they're working on my last nerve with this freaking mask crap. Cause I've got a knack for knowing when you know the shit's gonna hit the fan. I always been able to duck aside, even if it was like in the middle of it, like the hurricanes or the uh, earthquakes have been in. I was there, but I was aware enough when they happened to know what to do to survive it. Yeah. Okay, well, I see a big shitstorm, a financial shitstorm in the works for years now. And it's come into a balloon pop point where they can't keep lying to people about all this stuff. It's The, the truth has got to surface. 
And it did, well, but not enough of them understand or take time to look at it to get out to figure out what the fuck they're looking at. So they're believing all these stories. See, and that's... Hmm. They're shutting down more stuff. and uh, Oh, I know. I things know. are getting worse. They are, they are pushing it to... Yeah, it'll go off the cliff. So, yes. Right, so the the difference is, is it going to be a really big cliff or is it going to be a couple of feet? It depends on you your population. That's popu- how much damage. Depends on your population. Because the See, food supply lines should be getting hit in the next couple more months where it's oh, really yeah. noticeable. Oh, they're, they're already noticeable. Different things are, you know, limited. No, I don't, supply and I don't know. Shit. Where um, I'm at, okay. some things are becoming limited. Uh oh. But um, you know, other than that, I really think it's one of those things where if people, of course, you know, out here where we're used to coming into the winter, you just freaking stock up because you never know. You make sure you got plenty of stuff to where if you lose electricity or whatever, you got plenty of stuff that you can just you have a a hand turn can opener. Don't have things that run on electric. You have a a coffee pot that you can do on a camp stove, that kind of shit, because we know you can get some nasty-ass storms here and lose electricity for a couple of days. And so you still need canned goods that you can open to even if you just, you know, well, I have a little little heater downstairs that I'm, I'm lucky with that, but... You know, even my furnace will work. It's just that the blower won't work if the electricity goes out. Okay. So I have a little heater downstairs. I crank that bad boy up. I put my tea kettle on there. I have instant coffee if I need to. I have an. I also have a little single cup coffee brewer thingy that you just put on top of the coffee pot. You know, so, and I know an awful lot of people out here are like that. They're we're not really what one would call preppers, but no, but bad we, weather makes you live differently. Yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. we always stock Extreme, up. We're always yeah. Yeah. prepared because shit can happen. And wow. people shit. that, and See. I know people that go to the grocery store every goddamn day to get something for supper yeah. because they keep no food in their house. Yeah. Those are the ones that I'm concerned about because oh. those are the ones that will panic. Oh. Those are the ones that will not do so well. Uh, but yeah. the majority of people that, you know, they make sure their canned goods are stocked up. They make sure they have plenty of canned soup. They make sure they have plenty of bottled water. Mm. Those kind of things. <sighs> those people, they'll they'll ride it out for the most part. Things might get rough for a while, but, and that's where I feel bad for people in the cities, because shit, you can't you can't operate in the city like you do in a small community like no. where I live. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. From being here for this many years, so yeah, yeah, because the town council they're still there. Say I yeah. pass them by, and they say hey, and I say hey, we're all good. Because when they're not there is when I think things are wrong. Not when they are. When they're drinking, everything's good. When they're not drinking, something's going on somewhere. <laughs> what? Well, yeah. If they're drinking, everything's good. If they're yeah. not drinking, something's it, going if, on. It's just if these this group of men aren't aren't here associating out here, something beyond is happening, and they're avoiding the place. Hmm. So See, and I, that's I, being open to the cues out that's, there. That's that's being aware of the society that I've uh, been living in for a period of time. Yeah. To make sense of the of the things that I see without having have Cirque explain it to me, like I'm you know not capable of understanding it by myself. Well, it's you know it's um, hmm. like people have tells. You know, like yeah, exactly. Yeah, something. yeah. You know, you're yeah. being you're observant of the tells mm-hmm. that are out there. There's yeah. always something that'll yeah. clue you in. Yeah. Even the I'm birds, like, the birds behavior certain days. And then I know, oh, crap, no birds must be going to rain. 
see a yeah. bunch of birds and go, oh, it's overcast, but the birds are playing, so it's probably dry. <laughs> Little things like that. Not, yeah. Yeah, nothing life-changing, but uh, for if for these guys to not like me, if they didn't, they would be very open about it. They had a, a member of the group that didn't at first. He was very against me being in his neighborhood. But after a period of time, he, he got he got uh, over it, I suppose. And now when we pass, we say hello. But for the first two years or so, he didn't like it. <laughs> well, you grew on him, Flasher. Well, okay, but I never gave him grief about not being comfortable with me living in his neighborhood. You know, I just let him say what he had to say and go. And there was no reason, and he's an older guy than me, so it's no reason to take it any serious. It was just his displeasure, and it, over a period of time, it just got old, and he stopped doing it. Hmm. But if I would have played into it, which is what, I guess his role was to see if I was an asshole and start fighting with people over this, that, or the other thing. You know? Get rid of you quicker. Because if that was me in my area, that's what I'd do to you. <laughs> Push you until you left or prove that you weren't an idiot. Yeah. And two years, three years, that's about the right amount of time. For a small place like know. this, yeah. Some places it'd be like five. Oh, God, I know when I first moved to town in like 40 years ago. Hmm. The only way I, you know, people actually started kind of sort of accepting me was to say, oh, well, so-and-so is my grandpa. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. You know, because then, then it was it was okay that I moved to town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, when I was in the East End, I did that once in a bar. I had trouble in a bar, so I dropped my grandfather's name and went, oh, shit, sorry. Please don't call the cops on him, <laughs> <laughs> well, a guy blindsided me because I, I made a crack about uh, Mike Tyson was, was a bum and he's going to lose the next fight he's going to have. And it, and it was the next fight he had, he lost. <laughs> but this fucker, <laughs> this fucker in the bar didn't like me saying that. he come up when I, I wasn't looking at him and he just hits me in the side of the head, knocked me off my stool. It was pretty embarrassing. So I get up, and the owner's over here, you know, trying to help me up off the ground and stay between me and him and the other guy. What's this all about? I thought, so the, my opinion about Tyson. <laughs> wow. It's amazing yeah. to me that people will get physically violent. They have in my life, in the past. First 30 yeah. years was just terrible. The last 30, not so much. I don't, can't remember. I think it was... 28 or something, the last time I got physically involved with somebody else. And that was a blind side thing. I, I, uh, pussies. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I have issues with people that won't, what? you know, stand in front of you. No, nah, it's... Make it an obvious thing. It's, it's like... Life. It's chicken shit. But over, you, over an opinion about a boxer... To me at yeah. the time, it just seemed like, wow, this guy's fucking insane, you know. So it's no different than the Roman gladiators, you know. Sports, okay, so somebody doesn't die during the games now, for the most part. Hmm. But sports is the same as Roman gladiators. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Well, the same principle behind it, like a rock concert or any kind of group. Where there's an audience of people watching something else, because the group is a some thing all to itself, and then it has parts of it. Yeah, well, I've been to concerts that were had more people than the uh, population of the area I live in. So, <laughs> yeah, I went oh, okay, and then like '89, I went oh my god, I, I've I've had enough of this shit. Fucking too many people, blah, 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 blah. And then I forgot, but back in 2005, I got kidnapped. And I got so high, I, I 
forgotten the story and never been able to tell it correctly. But I think it was 2005, and uh, the roommate I had at the time, partner, her daughter and her husband kidnapped me and took me to a Rob Zombie. And who else was there? Some other band that everybody else likes. And I can't think of the fucking name of it. Anyway, so this Rob Zombie show is a small 5,000 seat place. Mm-hmm. And I went, okay, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. But you know, it wasn't my idea to go. But you got kidnapped. Flash got kidnapped. I know. I think that to I know. me is like, dude, seriously, Flash got kidnapped. <laughs> well, the the kids thought, and they thought enough of me to invite me to go. So I went, oh, fuck. How do you say no to that? Well, you know, if they're buying the tickets. <laughs> yeah, that was the whole thing. They were doing the driving. They were buying the tickets, the food, you name it. It was them doing it. And I, okay, I'm I'm going, sure. But, you know, there was a lot of reasons for that kind of um, reciprocation, let's call it. Because I did them a huge favor in a way, I guess. There, uh, The girl's father wouldn't step forward when she was having the second child. So there was no father figure in the delivery thing. So I stepped up in, in his place. Oh, and, cool. Yeah. Well, it was a, you know, weird time in my life, but I, so I did, you know, sometimes, uh, not being involved in the game makes it easier to, to, to do things that are good for other people in the game. Like, uh, the time when I helped this guy get a, a <laughs> he was marrying an English girl. He's from South Africa. He's married an English girl to get a, a green card and we all knew it. And mm-hmm. they, they needed a couple to witness their marriage and tell them blah, 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 blah. So me and the girl I was seeing at the time in England, she goes, sure, let's do it. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Why not? So we witnessed their, their wed- marriage thing, wedding, whatever it was, civil thing. And, yeah, because it was for them. It didn't help us any. We weren't getting anything for it. But... Yeah, sometimes you just got to break a rule or, or maybe bend something for the uh, for something better to come along, you know? Because this guy did yep. not want to go back to South Africa. He was terrified. And this is back Why? in, good Lord, 91. Yeah. Yeah. South Africa has never been real, real kind to white folk in the last <laughs> few years. That's what I was thinking. Was South Africa was kind of, kind of rough territory, isn't it? And I got to see in my lifetime, I've got to experience from England and Scotland interactions with people that were just in South Africa that came there to where I was. So you know they they were like, "Wow, you're from California. What the hell are you doing here?" <laughs> said, "Your story is way more uh, exciting than mine." <laughs> because <laughs> well that's what culture is you know if you're in england you think the guy from california is exotic and if you're and vice versa yeah and took sir forever to understand that oh man no you're the to me you're exotic because i'm from california for fuck's sake i mean how many americans do you we don't even see visitors here anymore from america just things See, and that's one of those things that Circle always used to say she has an ugly accent, and I think she no. has a really cool accent. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to listen to her during uh, the Monday show. And she gets all calmed down, and you know, it, it's, a, it's a different kind of conversation to listen to her than to talk yeah. to her, for me, because we talk different. Her and Grim talk one way, and me and her talk a different way. So I get to hear her slow down a little bit and think things through. <laughs> cool. Life has got its ups and downs, I suppose. Yes, it does. I don't know. It is. It's like a a yo yo thing. Well, it's just amazing the things that uh, I've got to in, enjoy doing in my life, and I I probably take them for granted. 
in a sense, because I got to do them, you know. Or they sound like the ramblings of a, a guy that read a lot of stories. Yeah. So there's there's only the two choices. <laughs> well, keep reading your stories. <laughs> okay. Well, it still looks counts. it still looks like Denmark out the window when I look outside. Well, there you go. Pretty sure this is Denmark. Well, if it doesn't look like Denmark, either you or Circle should be concerned. <laughs> One of the two of you. <laughs> we'll act Something as... really weird has just happened. I don't know. Something really weird is, has been going on for so long that I don't think people know it's weird. They think it's common and it's ordinary. And it's not. Like all this addiction to the electronic world. I think it's like... Uh, being called a, a pothead doesn't insult me because you know what I am? A pothead? Pretty much. I think that's what you call somebody that smokes their indica or their cannabis or their sativa. You know, whatever words you use to describe it, they, that particular concept involves smoking it. Mm-hmm. Well, there's just so many freaking uh, things in the world that you can smoke that are way more damaging than pot. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's just say that. Oh, sure. But see, pot, big number one. It's the number one uh, enemy of the world still. Oh, yeah. You big old pothead, druggy. But yeah. where it's, see... Where it's legal, then it's just a matter of commerce. They're not they're not looking at the bigger overall picture. And they've taken the freedom out of it by making it legal. See? It's not free. You're allowed to. Well if you're allowed to do something, there ain't no freedom to it. The freedom sure. part actually comes from defying the uh authority and doing it anyway without their blessing or their assistance. Hmm. What? Hey, this resistance is, hmm. is futile. If you openly do it, you have to resist in sub subversive, uh, second-hand ways. And sometimes through other people is way more effective than what one person can do by themselves. It's crazy. Well, the world is crazy. So there you go. No, no, no. The psychotics that run the world are crazy. And they're liars because they've got really good people convinced that they're not crazy. See? And it took a lot of years and a lot of planning and a lot of work to get to where they are. And I believe the goal is to make this all global so they can take away freedom of trade and currency and uh, well, they'll eventually they'll put you, push you to a black market system, but the globalist people won't care about that. That will still be small potatoes compared to what they're selling. <laughs> See, and to me, anytime they try and push something towards a black market system, it's because they're going to benefit from the black market system. Well, so, look at the CIA, uh, case in point. I mean, yeah. shit. Well, they claim to be the good guys, though. They're they're misrepresenting yeah. the whole fucking... See, that's what I mean is, the people that are in law enforcement are the most disgusting, fucking vile shit there is because how do you do a job like that and be so violent towards other people based on what? You're, I've seen the you know enough of it with my own eyes to know that this goes beyond protection. This is just outward violence to the public. Well, I mean, just look at the phrase, law enforcement. They are forcing something upon others because they know what's best. Just ask them, they'll tell you. What's your experience so, been so, so much lately? I mean, that's more what's got my attention. Not the past, but the present. See, and I really don't have a whole hell of a lot of 
of dealings with law enforcement because I just do my thing and avoid them like the plague. You're, so. you're still doing interstate travel, though, to visit your family. Yeah. So, you're, you're see, that's what I mean. I'm the home bug body that's completely satisfied with a two-mile walk. It's enough. I'm done. Okay, back home, back to my hobbit hole. But well, you... see, I'm satisfied <coughs> with that as well, but hmm. things in the family have made it to where, and actually I was talking to mom about that the other day because she goes, one of those few moments where she actually remembered something recently, and she goes, well, isn't this the second oil change you've had since you started coming down here? Yes, Mom. Well, how many miles have you put on your van? Oh, a little over 7,000 miles since I've been coming to see you. And, wow, that's a lot of miles. Well, yeah, but... Eh, you only got one, necessary. Mom. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. necessary. So, you know, mm -hmm. it just is. So hmm. it's not. I would prefer to be able to stay home and putter around in my yard and do. Oh, that. oh, okay. But but this is, responsibilities this is to yeah to get your way in this other area. You got to do this. Yeah, I call it maintenance. Yeah. Things need to be maintained. And there you go. Or they yep. break down. Sure. Well, we're in this society of disposables, and here you are. And you're you don't you don't follow that path. <laughs> no. You break no. all the freaking rules. I'm telling you. I I know. It's because I'm kind of obnoxious like that. Because you know, it, I think my non-compliance <laughs> in this COVID crap, regardless of my verbal expression, my non-compliance doesn't really uh, mean anything to the to the world out there at all. No, not really. That's no, why the world uh, really didn't notice when you left the human race. No, no. But when I go to the bar, my mind, you know, because all the notes and signs and every fucking where, and, and it's so intimidating. And then you go in the bar and everybody's, you know, barefaced like you normally see them. No masks on or anything. But they got one close by in case there's whatever police are supposed to make you have it available or whatever the fuck you're supposed to do with it. Stupid. Yeah. Grown men and women acting like fucking, I don't even know what to say, uh, pawns. Well, I don't know. Are they willing? Are they being forced? I feel forced. I do not feel willing to go along with any of this horse shit. There's an awful lot of going along to get along going on. I don't have that. Yeah, we kind of gathered that flash. Sir, yeah, Cirque's worried that, you know, I'm going to take it too far out there in public. And, and I expect the worst out of it. And I go out there and when I actually am speaking to people, it's always the people that know me that think like this anyway. <laughs> and nothing comes of any of it. It's... It's the person that walks by you in a mask. That's who you got to... What? How did we get here? No? Yeah. No, that's not how I want to... See, my existence should not depend on fear-based notions brought on by government entities. I thought it gave all that up. <laughs> well, see, that's what you get for having an independent thought flash because you just thought you gave that all up. But somebody else said, no, no, no. <laughs> you just think you did. I'm going to make you dance, nigger. <laughs> Watch much, the yeah. nigger dance. Yeah. Well, see, because, well, when push comes to shove, I've got to be responsible enough to treat my wife without creating a hoopla. See? So, you but, you know, I think expecting it and then never having it is way better than getting it and not knowing it's coming. <laughs> so, I think they call it paranoid. Ah. ah. Well, every time I've gone out since this mask upgrade began a couple of weeks ago, I felt this uncomfortability. I mean, I know I'm radiating. <laughs> when I go out. 
Well, you probably are. It's a vibe you're putting off. Because I can, I can feel, well, when I look at somebody in a mask, I can feel my own desperation for looking, oh, you pitiful thing, you, what are you doing to yourself, is how I feel about people wearing masks. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think people really do um, receive the, the vibe of pity. Yeah, in and a it's ins- it's an, way. it's insulting. Well, come on, it's got to be an insulting vibe to pick up off some stranger that can't even see your face. It's the whole the whole participation thing in a human being is just all fucked up. All these things are being, all these signals are going all haywire. They're not supposed to be done this way. This is why yeah. things are all fucked up. Is because we keep getting told how to interact with each other in stupid fucking ways that don't work. Ah, but it's for the betterment of society, don't you know? Yeah, well, they keep selling that horse shit to us, but, I mean, ugh. like you, you keep saying, there, there are more and more people waking up. Okay, well, I don't feel I'm awake to anything. I just feel that among all the people I've met, I think, that this COVID thing is a big fraud. It's been a fraud since it started. It, it never was real. And it's never going to be real. But it's a good threat. There you go. Oh, yeah. Wonderful oh, threat. Yeah. I, I'm jealous that I didn't dream this shit up so I could blackmail a whole planet and act like a bunch of idiots over something that's not going to happen. You're going to get the Rona. <laughs> yeah, and if you're 80, it's going to kill you. So what? Fuck! Give me a break. You know, I'm 60, and I don't, I don't care now about it. If this was fucking real, I would still react the same way. I've been lied to so much by this government shit over my lifetime that I don't care anymore. Fuck them. Do your worst, but I'll judge that on my surroundings. And I see the same people all the time when I go out in public, and they're all older than I am. Well, not all of them, but a handful of them are. And they're whenever I pop in, there they are. A certain time of day, they're having their morning beer. So, hmm, what's wrong with this story? Why is there an 80-year-old man drinking a beer at, at 11 o'clock in the morning? How come he's not all you know bedridden and dying of pneumonia or Corona or something. Because pneumonia is not corona. Well, you know what I mean. Ah, come on. Not here you go. viral. Oh. Uh, you're going to kill my rant with reality. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did, yes, right. I yeah, but don't don't sidestep the point. This fellow, he's, he's an older fella. Yeah. And he's down at this bar every morning at 11 o'clock, be, before 11 o'clock, having a morning beer. That's his ritual. And that's probably what's keeping him alive. That's not the point. The rest of these monkeys believe there's a fucking corona. This 80-year-old guy doesn't give a shit. I'm going to have my morning beer. Fuck them dummies and their corona. Well, there you go. There you go. Moosey, I'm with you. I don't want to buy any horse shit either. Now, I will take some cow shit if it's mixed in with some... Some mulched up hay and some dirt because it's real good fertilizer, but I don't want no horse shit. <laughs> I like, I don't know. Horse shit got its purposes. Oh, yeah. But I'm just lucky enough I don't have to deal with horses, so I don't have to worry about stuff like that. Yeah. I see how you are. I call you it delegating, it. yeah, I call it delegating authority. You know, I leave the farming uh-huh. to the farmers. You know, dairy farming to the dairy farmers, sort of, those sort of things. And then here at home, me and Cirque have a little garden every year now. And How'd your garden do this year? How did your garden grow? <laughs> man, she was the, uh, I was taking cucumbers and tomatoes down to the bar and sharing cool. them and sharing them with the uh, the owner of the bar. She was like, wow. And the first time I went down there, I had three cucumbers in my bag, right? Just mm-hmm. came off the vine, and I handed them to her. And there's a little kitchen area where we're standing, where she could wash uh-huh. them off. 
And she just takes the damn thing right out of my green bag that I use and starts eating it right out from off the vine. Oh, I do that all the time. Yeah, well, she's a cut like you. She's a country girl from Denmark, country girl. It's the same thing, just Danish. Yeah. And uh, yeah. well, yeah, but she's like, wow, these are really good. Cause Sir put a lot of work in doing the soil and well, special. Yes, yeah, so she got really involved in uh, building a. She had me make frames for her out of wood to encase to keep the snails out with bricks yeah, and different this and different that. And she did good. Had strawberries and uh, cucumbers and tomatoes. Well, sweet. And everybody that ate one was, their eyes were like, wow, this is good. I ate plenty of it. So, yeah. Well, there is nothing like homegrown. Oh, man, I'm telling you. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's like Sham Wow. It's amazing. Right. And and all these <laughs> see in all these little steps with the internet over the years and meeting certain people that would introduce me to new ideas. Mhm. Okay. Well, this version of gardening pleases her, so there's no reason to try to improve it with anything. I just follow her lead and let her you know, let her choose what she wants. Well, see and that's when I first started gardening again after, you know, kids and all that fun stuff, I started remembering how <laughs> fun and how not so fun it was growing up as a kid and, and doing big community garden. And Mom and I actually talked about that a couple of weeks ago because I knew we shared the garden with someone, but I wasn't sure who we shared it with. Well, it was some uh, people that lived like about five blocks away that owned that lot, but they let us garden on it so long as we shared half of the produce with them. Well, uh, that's no big deal. I mean, that kept us kids busy and kept us in food. And when I started gardening again, it's like, okay, we'll start off with the cucumbers and the tomatoes and the onions, and we'll start doing potatoes. Then we'll try a little bit of this and good God, now I'm Every year when I look at my seed catalog to decide what other kind of unusual thing do I want to try this year. Hmm. <laughs> it's it's fun now because it's, hmm. let's see if this will grow well out here. We'll just give this, we'll just buy one bag, one packet of seeds for this year and just try it. See how it does. Well, yeah. and it was people like you that influenced, you know, decisions to, to pursue this at all. Because, you know, we're city people, me and sir. But well, the, it is kind of fun to get out and play in the dirt and grow your own food. And and whatever she gave away, people would just, they want more. So, hmm. oh yeah, yeah, it was. It feels good to be on the successful. Side. And then because one day in particular, uh, one of the guys that was helping me on a project here at the house, there we were out there. He grabs a, a a cucumber off the vine, takes a bite of it, but it wasn't a good one. He went, oh, oh, well, he picked one the wrong one off the vine. But every, it's like the one <laughs> the one that wasn't ripe. Ripe. Uh, it was overripe yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't yeah. get it in time. Yeah. So. <laughs> but those that was the, the worst uh, response we had to our vegetables. Yeah. That's not too bad. Nobody got poisoned or ill or <laughs> Threatening me, don't you ever bring these here again? <laughs> oh yeah, quite oh, yeah. the opposite. Now, nah, reporting to me about what kind of meal that she would make for her Garston, and I forget immediately because drinking, you know. But yeah, it, it was nice to be informed and, and welcomed like that, especially over food. I didn't know that until I did it. I went, wow, that's pretty cool. It's a self fulfilling thing. You've got. Nothing to do with anybody else. It's just the way they respond to the vegetable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, reading all that, it, it's like it's great, weird, I suppose. But it's kind of, uh, what do you call that, self-fulfilling somehow. It makes you yeah. feel good. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. like this year, my brother David and I, he gave me some garlic. Ooh. And I sent some squash down to him. Well, he sent a picture of, of a 
dinner that he – well, he made acorn squash soup one night and sent me a picture of it. And it's like, you asshole, supposed to be sharing that. And then he made um, – Oh, he made something with zucchini. I don't remember what it was now, but it's like, <laughs> dude, that looks so good. You need to send me the recipe for that. Uh, but, you know, and then um, another brother, he and his wife this year did a big garden, and she was constantly bringing cucumbers and tomatoes up for mom, which I would swipe cucumbers because my cucumbers did not do well this year. So it's like, okay, you guys can have some of this that I got coming out my backside, and I'll take some of your cucumbers. How's that work? So we've kind of sort of actually decided that next summer we're just going to have a family farmer's market at mom's house. Oh. You know, once our gardens start producing, everybody brings mm. what they yeah. don't need, don't want, whatever, too much of to mm. mom's house. And as we all meet up at mom's, we'll just swap out produce. <laughs> and then mom gets to eat whatever she wants to eat in the interim. So it is, it's fun. It's fun. Getting getting more and more people involved in doing that is a lot of fun. See the dork life. Mm-hmm. It's all it's mm-hmm. really kind of simple and dull and mundane. It's not exciting, and it it just feels good to do certain things that they when I was be told about them sound boring as fuck. But when you actually physically do it, you go, well, "Damn, that was worth it." I'm amazed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why they say live and learn, so you can go out and experience shit and see if you like doing it or not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And I still know people that do not like to garden, but by golly, when I got tomatoes ripe or something like that, especially little gal that's renting my house in town. Yeah. When I grow the little cherry tomatoes. Oh, yeah, the boy. That I'm that I'm ready to start picking. Yeah. When do you want me to come over? Absolutely. Cirque had this, yeah, the same thing, little tiny round ones. She had like three uh-huh. different kinds. And then by the house, she had this other tree, this other, uh, not tree, but it was huge. I swear that the branches on the tomato plant were probably, I don't know, almost as big as a quarter. Cool. Yeah. And that, that, just could, tomatoes kept coming and coming and coming. So anyway, ah, brag, 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 brag. But I, yeah. I did enjoy. I know how dorky, but I did enjoy the participating in the delivery. See, that's what I mean. Is she had a great way to grow it, but then what do you do with it once you got it? She's only got so many relatives, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, then there was more after the relatives got some and the neighbors got some. There were still more. So I was in distributing it amongst people that did cert didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it, it's awesome. It to be a, a visitor in a country like this, in a time in life when all these horrible things are happening. So to come out of it with a smile at about anything at the end of the day is it makes it feel a lot better. You know? Yep. Because I could take it all for granted and be all pissed off about the masking and the force and all that, but eh, it's not its not that much on me. It's more on them. I'm feeling it for other people. Ooh, crap. Like being one of those idiot empaths, you know? <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't really want to be concerned with how you are. <laughs> I've got my own life to live. Let, leave me alone. Go, take the mask off and let me be be myself again. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, we oh. came to the end. Well, and we're over. Yep. Sorry, Grim. I got yakky there at the end. Thanks a well, lot, Miss Mary, for helping me out with this here dork table. And you close us out with your wise words. Well, I will. I will close you out with it's. I'm going to be stepping away from the radio for a couple of months because family things. So. Thank you all for listening. Have an absolutely wonderful, spooktacular halloween or Halloween, however you wish to put it. <laughs> and remember that, you know what, what you put out into the world is what comes back to you. And things may look pretty dastardly and pretty dark, but eh, where there is breath, there is hope. So, we got this covered. You don't have to believe all the bullshit that's out there in the media. 
Keep on plugging along. You can do it. That's it, Flash. That's my words of wisdom. Well, thanks a lot, Miss Mary. And uh, um, I don't know if I'll do a show alone. Maybe I'll hostage somebody and do it with a uh, with somebody I can kidnap. There you go. Well, thanks everybody. After the first of the year, before I will yeah, be able to. I got it. So I was just thanks, adding. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Love ya.